authorize schools. We want schools to be, this is the voice of the authorizer, we want those schools to be successful, but we also recognize at the end of the day that we are going to be the entity that has to evaluate them and decide whether we're going to renew them or if they're meeting the objectives outlined in their charter, their contract. So we find a lot of authorizers struggling to figure out how to, how to balance those roles. And also coming up with accountability systems that aren't necessarily, um, you know, you're, you're great, you're renewed, or you're terrible, you're revoked. Some intermediate steps of, we've seen a red flag, we need you to, to develop a corrective action plan, or you know, if, you know, if we go out into charters and we see that only two to three percent of the kids are kids with disabilities, that's gonna be a red flag and we're gonna have a conversation with you. I think that's why we've taken the approach of, we're going to show the data, we're gonna to talk to the schools and now see what they do. Um, because we're not at the point where we feel comfortable saying, you know, all schools must have under 5% suspension rate, all schools must have under X% percent expulsion rate, because there are parents that may say, well, that's not the kind of school I want. I wanted a stricter school. That's why I chose this school. So we want schools to be able to come up with that balance of their policies and also not letting down their parents who came to that school for a certain type of culture and, you know, a certain type of mission. Our real concern is ensuring that you, that a school is in fact not, um, doesn't have any barriers to access and doesn't create a climate or a culture that denies access. So for example, we had a school in South Georgia where um, it was in a county that's majority African American. The school was located in a, a neighborhood that was majority African American. And yet you would go to the school and the school was majority um, Caucasian, white. Mm -hmm. And so this school came up for renewal probably within my first six months on the job. And, you know, we told them that you need to have a, a comprehensive recruitment plan in order to come back, in order to be renewed. We amended the contract for it to be extended for one year. And at the end of that year, they came back with a very comprehensive recruitment plan that they had actually already began to implement. And so I say all that to say we didn't tell them what needed to be in the plan. We didn't tell them how to execute on it. We didn't even really give them much guidelines other than, you know, this is the data. And it seems that, you know, this just doesn't make sense. Do you have an explanation of this? Why is this happening in your community? And they really didn't. And it, it turned out that this school had a reputation in the community that it was not for African American students. And so if that is a reputation that you have, then you do have a pattern of practice of dissuading people of color from even applying to your school. And it's going to take an active, concerted effort to change that opinion, right? And so, for example, some of the things that they did is they partnered with a local pre-K in a low in, in the community right there um, to where those pre-K students got first priority seats into the kindergarten class. And that's where they had the most um, access, right? That's where they had the most open number of lottery seats. So the kindergarten class is really where they're going to make the biggest impact. Um, they founded, um, I can't remember their exact phrase for it, but essentially it was like a board of community members and various stakeholders, business stakeholders, but also early education folks and just different, um, the mayor is actually on the board of their small town who happens to be an African American woman. Um, but to talk about this issue in this school, how can we create more access? And so, you know, I think part of what we would like our schools to do is to simply follow the law. Um, which isn't really asking for very 